Alex, thank you for your service. Oh, but I appreciate your thoughts, yes. Yes. That's fine. Uh, it was, a, I was, I was about, about 14 years old at the time, and uh, I, it was a Sunday afternoon, if I remember, and uh, that's when the uh, Japanese uh, raided Pearl Harbor. Yes. And uh, I was laying on the playing on the floor by the by the radio listening to it, and my whole family were sitting around there, got really excited about the whole thing, and, and so did I. At that, at that point in time, uh, President Roosevelt, who was our president at that particular time, uh, wanted to. Uh, declare war, and he did immediately on the, on the Japanese at that point. And the way things were in those days, uh, everybody was pretty active and ex excited about things. And uh, I guess they, uh, everybody was joining up, joining the service, you know, and the, you know, you're a kid, you know, you're still a kid at 14, you know, you think you know everything, but uh, you don't, really, but uh, you feel like you should be doing something to help. Yeah. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I did. I went ahead and uh, was working my way through uh, school, and I was wanted to get out of school anyway because I wasn't doing that good at the time. And... Uh, I started figuring how could I get into the service and you know and and go go away and do my part. So what I did what I did is took my birth certificate and I put uh, lemon juice on it. <laughs> and I put the lemon juice on there and I changed the. 1927 to uh, all I needed to do was do the last figure, which was a, uh, a seven, which was 1927 was the actual. I changed that seven to a nine, and that, uh, uh, no, did I go up or not? Oh, I, I changed it where I was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And I hung on that for a while, and I went down and got them down to see the naval uh, recruiting officer down there. And I walked in, and uh, of course I was kind of a, a, a bigger kid, but uh, and they were still looking for a lot of people. And I walked in there, and, and it was just in Schenectady, and I uh, enlisted. Hmm. And. Uh, he said, you sure you know what you're doing? And I said, sure I do. Yeah, I know, I know what I'm doing. So uh, he said, well, you gotta get these papers signed. Well, uh, uh, isn't my birth certificate enough? No, 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 it isn't. We gotta have your guardian, right? Yeah. So my guardian at the time was my grandmother. And she said, you're not going no place. And I said, well, if you don't let me go, I'm going to go anyway. I'll go through Canada if I have to, to, to go out and help out, you know. Yeah. So she took me into the school, and she went to the, the uh, uh, she, she went to the uh, officers, uh, officers there that were in charge of uh, uh, kids and keeping them, keeping them in line where they're supposed to be. And she said, she asked a question to my grandmother, what, what's, what's he want to do? And she said, he wants to go into the Navy. He said he's all set and he thinks he can get in if he can get his papers signed and you are the guardian. So we brought, I brought him here. No, so she says, yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit upset. I don't know what to do with them, you know. 
She says you might as well let him go because you're not doing an awful lot here. And I did. When we left, we, we signed up. Now, that was oh, the early part of the year, around, around January or February, because we just changed, because it was 1942. And then, 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 then it seemed like it was the, the, first, the first of the year, brought us up to 43. And uh, and I stay to stay around all waiting and waiting and waiting all summer long. They never they never called me. So when you first enlisted, what rank were you at the time? Well, that's, I was just plain seaman at that time. Hmm. Just no no officer because I hadn't been in school. I was hadn't been in the school that uh, that long. Not at not at fourteen. I was getting ready to, you know, get ready to go to. Uh, I was at junior high at that point, and uh, so at that point, at that point, uh, all the people I was telling I was going into the navy, and it was week after week after week, and nothing is happening, and all of a sudden. I think it was right around Christmas time you know, that year. Uh, I got a notice to report to uh, this building over in Albany, and just to bring uh, a change of clothes. And I went there, and it was that night, and they had a ton of guys there. Yeah. And we started going through, and they started painting numbers on our chest with, the, the, like, methylate so they could identify us. And they started with the, the shots in the arm, and all oh, them needles hurt. And we got had about four or five all at once, you know. And you're standing there, <laughs> what am I doing here, you know? So, but to make a long story short, I, I passed all the, uh, the tests and got all the shots. And I'm worried that somebody's going to grab me by the collar and get me out of there. But the, they, they didn't do it. They, I was still moving through, and I was supposed to be going down to, uh, uh, down, down south to, the, to the, uh, one of the naval uh, headquarters place down there called uh, Solomon's I, Solomon's, Maryland, which was uh, a new new place that just opened up and I was going to the amphibious forces. That was a different new group that they started. Did you ever hear of them? The amphibious, naval amphibious forces? No, I've never heard of them before. No, no, they use and drove these things, and we lay, hit, the, all, hit all the beaches on the invasions. Yeah. And uh, a, little, a little scary, but uh, uh, it was still fun because I hadn't gone through it yet. So I, I wouldn't suggest uh, take that route, but uh, I don't think I'd want to do it again that way. Yeah. But, uh, so we went, uh, uh, we, we went out, as I said, we went, we went down there near, uh, I can't think of the name of the place at the moment, but uh, it was right, uh, Solomon's, Maryland was the uh, ultimate base, and that was a United States Naval uh, a base down there, and, uh, had to do with uh, a new approach to invasion technology, where you'd go in there and, uh, and write with the troops and support them, bring them in, and uh, kind of wait for them and uh, uh, I'd get them out of there if they if we had to. So we we're using those just for about everything under the sun. Yeah. So, go ahead. How long did you serve? In the Navy? 
I, uh, about four, four and a half years. Four and a half years? Yeah, I got out in uh, 1946, uh, Lido Beach. I uh, was in the, uh, I, have, I have a problem with my throat because I got, our, sh our ship got hit and that side right there. Yeah. If you can see these, these are replicas of small mortars. Yeah. What, which is kind of unique yeah. They have mortars on a on a patrol boat, but yeah. that's that's what we that's what we did. You could, these things, mortars. We carried uh, three point three point two uh, millimeter mortars. We carried three of them, and down below was all the ammo. Yeah. Ammunition, and it was being passed up. And uh, and and fired as fast as you could. They kept going and going and going and going. And when they first started with that, one of the problems was uh, they were bolted to the deck on the foredeck. Yeah. And that's only quarter inch plate down there, and these things are welded, they had them tack welded to the, to the place. And we're breaking the seams and everything else. And they didn't know what to do about it. Yeah. Every time they'd fire, you get the, you get this arrangement. So, one of the, one of the, one of the guys in the flotilla went over and got some, uh, Two by, I think they're two by sixes, some someplace, and he made like a. You ever been in a sandbox when you were a kid? Yeah. Okay, he made a sandbox bigger than uh, bigger than the gun emplacement, and they use sea sand inside of that. Yeah. And the gun is set down on that, right in, right on real sand. Uh huh. And it was just like a soft pad. <laughs> and, uh, that, the, that was the biggest break we got. Or you, you, you were break these things were only tack welded, uh, tack welded in many places. So uh, you, you couldn't be rough. Couldn't rough them up too much. Yeah. So when you're about to fire the mortar, you're sitting nice and comfy on sea sand, yeah, nice and you comfy. Got it. You got it. LCI's had uh, ladders. And they went down to the down to the water, and as they went down that ladder, especially over in Europe, they were just shooting those guys as fast as they walked across that ladder. The Germans were at that time, yeah. and I was not over there. Thank goodness, I was always in the Pacific. By the time I got to the place, and uh, it was. Uh, I want to try to find a couple of notes here where I might. As we and we went, I got uh, the uh, complete bunch of data on uh, my whole my whole term out there in the Pacific and every island I went to and every in, uh, every uh, invasion that we. We had we were involved in. They'd grab us for everything. I mean, from taking garbage to some place, <laughs> believe it or not, or going out there and uh, what we had on the back end of these things were uh, what they call smoke smoke makers, yeah. and they had uh, Okinawa out there where I was. Or ended up anyway. Okinawa, they had the kamikazes out there. Did you ever hear of the kamikazes? I think so. Yeah. Well, they were they were pretty bad stuff. They uh, they caused a lot of a lot of stuff like 
like this kind of a mess where they dive, got up, got up, dived right into the uh, right into the ship, Please. and uh, made a terrible mess out of a lot of things. Yeah. So, what was your favorite place while traveling? Uh, what was that question again? What was your favorite place while traveling? Uh, before I got involved, uh, it was a boat. It was a ship. It, it, that's a hundred. That was one hundred and thirty-seven foot long, and uh, that was that was my home. And I was on that one or two or two other ones at the same time. And as long as I was on board, I was fine. And uh, but uh, after a while, <clears throat> uh, I shouldn't say after a while. The first time I got the first time they were firing at us, they sprayed across the the deck, and. Uh, I was on, that was my gun position was here. They call it the general quarters. It's right there. And uh, this was before the invasion and they come on, they shot right across the, right across here. And uh, I changed at that point. I was really scared. I was really scared. I'm not kidding you. That, 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 just being 15, you think you got it, but you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what else were you, did you want to know anything about those kamikazes? I probably started to tell you that we had the smoke machine on the back of this. And what they did with a smoke machine was uh, we had a number of these, maybe 15 or 16 LCIs lined up on the uh, windward, windward side of the the harbor, and we let smoke go over and cover the entire anchorage where they had all the boats, all the big boats. And they were hidden, they couldn't see them. But they got so frustrated, they didn't care if they saw them or not. They were diving right down into that smoke, <laughs> trying to hope they're hitting something. All right, so. Well, my questions are, why did you enlist? I enlisted because that was the, the way I felt and everybody else did about their country. They loved their country and they wanted to defend it and keep it. And I enlisted for the same thing, to go out there and kill the enemy and get this war over with. Yeah. So, which years did you serve? Which year? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I, uh, let's see, I got in there in 1943, although I joined 42. Remember I told you that lag we had between so I got there in uh, 43, 1943 to 1946. All right. So, um, besides Maryland, where did you travel? Where did I travel? Yeah. Oh my goodness sakes. Uh, Saipan. Guam, oh, I, I should have brought you a list of that too, but uh, I didn't. But uh, just about everything from Ulithi, well, Ulithi was kind of the, the main place you come in and you anchored there usually. And from that point you joined your group and you went different places. And uh, I didn't bring a list of every place I went, but uh, I can almost, I can remember a lot of them. There was like Saipan, Kenyon, Guam, uh, went to uh, Japan, went over to Sea of China. I followed uh, 
I followed the uh, minesweepers after the war up there, which was scary. They were there cutting mines, and we're standing over here with rifles, and we're trying to blow the mines up. I mean, that's, that's kind of scary. You, you Sometimes uh, you look over and you miss one and it's going by the ship and it's scaring you, you know, if you ever hit that thing. They were trying to destroy them. They were cutting them loose and getting them out of there. And it was cleaning mines after the war. Yeah. Instead of going home like I figured I was going to be doing. But... Um, I could provide you with a, uh, a whole list of places that I, that I went. I have them, but uh, I didn't bring them with me. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think it, I don't think I did anyway. No, yeah. So while you were on the ship, what was your job? I was a uh, communications, I was a, a signalman. Uh, and I did nothing because we couldn't use radios at the time. Yeah. And I was up on, you see that flashing light there? Yep. Okay. It's not flashing. I don't mean it's flashing. But that's my uh, communication means. All in Morse code. Do you do much of that? Uh, I don't. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Okay. But that's what we use. And flags. Like uh, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, that's the only way we got our messages back. Matter of fact, I would get <laughs> the this, this skipper. I was up there with him, and he said, you ever tell anybody? He said, I can't read that stuff. But if you tell anybody, you're a dead man. He said, <laughs> I don't want anybody knowing what we're, what we're, what we're doing. So don't tell anybody anything, and that's the way we held off. And, hmm. But we sent messages back and forth from one boat to the other, and it was quite interesting. It felt very important, and that was during your daytime stuff, not during the battle, when you, when you were really on general quarters where you had to go ahead and prepare to fight, defend yourself. You. Uh, I was here on this on this gun. I was a gunner on this uh, this 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 twenty millimeter here. There was a twin twin forty up here, and there was one on each quadrant there. These were twenty millimeters. Nothing up here. Yeah. And uh, then after that, after after that. After that was over, then you go ahead and do your do your thing as far as uh, uh, <clears throat> going back to your regular duties. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It was a very good time. Yeah, I'm wearing my dog tags too, actually. Yeah, I wanted to see them. So there's mine. Okay. Alex, okay. I'm saying that was month of the military child. April 21st, 2017. 2017, okay. And then right here, this is my dad's. Oh, right good. Now. So, did they have body armor back then? What's that? Did they have body armor back then from no. penetrating bullets? Very little of anything. Yeah. No, they did not. A, you had... Uh, you had shields in front of the guns. I, I didn't put them on this. That, that's the only thing that saved me. Yeah. When we had that explosion down there, it just all that, a lot of that shrapnel just yeah. came right through here. And I had the gun turned that way, and I had these two quarter-inch plates. Yeah, so like in front of me, right there. Yeah. While the gun went through those two holes, or through that line there. Yeah, you can see. Uh, like right here, could you like duck down behind here? Like behind the mortar? Yeah, they were, there were two plates. And they were pretty close to the barrel. 
Okay. Yeah. And in front of it. And you fired through through visually through the the uh, the gun itself, and uh, that uh, that was the way you were, you were protected. And it just so happens when that mortar hit and it blew up, uh, my gun was positioned. Uh, I don't know. Some, something told me to turn the thing. I don't know why. I I, I don't know why. But uh, I don't know. Somebody up top knows more about things than I do. I, uh, it protected me, and uh, I just had you know a few pieces in it, my neck and uh, uh, my uh, my arm, and uh, let's see my knee was cut open. It was under the plate. So what did you do in your free time? Uh, work to keep the uh, your ship clean. And your equipment too. And your equipment, yes. And repaired what you, what any particular damage that was uh, that you had, yeah. and uh, in many cases they found out things that uh, they were doing that were wrong. Uh, obviously, firing firing mortars too fast, the barrels would heat up, and they would jam, and you couldn't get them out of there. Yeah. And that, that's dangerous. Yeah. So that gave us some problems. But uh, you learned an awful lot. I mean, this uh, this was a gung ho, get it done. Yeah. And uh, get it done and dust. Get it done the best best way you can. Get in there and get out. You know. And, but uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta think a little bit about what you're doing. And uh, we uh, we learned a lot. We gave, became a, a a darn good flotilla. That's a number of these. Probably fourteen different boats were in that one flotilla. Flotilla. They all traveled together and did their thing. You know. Yeah. So what did you do as a kid? Oh, as a kid. Yeah. Uh. One time I. Uh, after they shot at us the first time, and they came pretty pretty close, I waited a while. But I, I said, I said to the the skipper one night up on the conning tower there, <clears throat> when we were up on duty. I said, you know, I I think I want to get out of here. I want I want to go home. He said, what? I said, I said, I want to go home because I'm only 15. He says, you're only 15? It's too bad because you go home when the rest of us go home and I get back to duty. Yeah. That's the way it went. That's the way that ended. I never, never, uh, never brought it up again. But I still wanted to go home, I'll tell you. But we, 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 uh, we got through it. We went. We we had about uh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you how many different operations we had. Not physically. I'm talking about attacks and stuff like that, and patrols and things that were going on. People sk trying to sneak from one island to another island uh, on a log and all, all kinds of stuff. We're picking up people all, all the time. You know. So we were, we were busy. The, the, the only thing you could really do is is read or, or kind of <clears throat> torment your fellow man, so to speak. We did some of that, you know, the jokes, you know, that you know what goes on. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you eat while you were on the ship? Uh, very, very little. <laughs> we didn't have a real uh, good meals. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, Hamburg, well, not, uh, not Hamburg, but uh, canned spam and 
We had powdered eggs and we had uh, powdered milk and it, it wasn't the greatest uh, food in the world. And yeah. we didn't, we couldn't pull up to any a uh, place where you could just walk up the plank and go to a, a diner or something like <laughs> that. Not a, not out there. Yeah. No. I mean, while you are on the island somewhere, you could find something like fruit or. Uh, well, there was some coconuts and stuff like that. Once coconuts, every so good. every so good often, water. you might run into run into something or grab a hole. Of, and. They had, they had uh, three, like, two, two, three point old beer or something like that. And on occasion, you could have a beer at the on, the, on one of the islands and go over there and have a have a party or whatever you wanted yeah. to do. Yeah, you got a shot at it anyway. Yeah. So, how many friends did you make? Well, in the name. all of them. All of them. <laughs> quite a bit, quite a quite bit. With the, you, you're on with the, our crew was about 37 people. 37 people? On there, that's, that's about it. And uh, you're pretty close uh, together all the time. It's not, not as tough as a submarine is, but uh, it was the next thing to it, I think. And uh, you can get aggravated really quick, you know, if you let yourself. But it don't do you any good where you're going to go, you know. Yeah. You go to the other side of the boat, <laughs> you know, that's about it. You know. yeah. But uh, we did, we got along pretty good. Good. And uh, and if you were at, a type that was, uh, you know, causing problems or something like that. They, uh, you, you didn't have any friends. So you, if, you, if you want a friend, you better play the game, so to speak. Yeah. So uh, what was basic training like? What was? Basic training. Basic training. Uh, it's just what you see, basically. Uh, uh, it's, it's what you see in the movies and so on and so forth. You, you march, you fire, learn how to fire the, the rifles because you're in an amphibious group and uh, you got to do all that stuff. Yeah. You know, that was before they had seals and all that. You know. yeah. So did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted, remember at the beginning we talked about uh, going down to the uh, the naval recruiter and he thought I was kind of, you sure you know what you're doing? I said, yep. Of course they, uh, they got, they weren't supposed to take me, I guess. I mean, and I think he knew, he didn't say anything about it, but he, he has a quota too that he's got to get filled. Yeah. So they say, let's get this guy, you know, get him in there, right? <laughs> and I wanted to go anyway, so. Yeah. My, the only one I scared was, uh, was my grandmother, that's all. I feel sorry for that. I did. But, uh, Especially when she got the word that uh, I had been uh, wounded, and that was that was kind of tough. I, we uh, when we had the explosion, uh, we got the word to abandon ship, and I I was probably one of the first one to go, but I, but I was the one over the side. And uh, they tried to pick me up when they were going in. And I said, no, 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 <laughs> give me a floating boat that I can, something I can get out of here, really. So, so you probably jumped right off here or there, right? Well, no, I, I was, see, was, that was my gun position was here, see? So I went right over there, <laughs> right, right down like that. Wow. Yeah. And uh, 
they had these small uh, pea boats that uh, were bringing the military in and they were going back out to the hospital ship. So uh, they got dragged me out of the water and I don't remember if I could talk too much. I was a little bit scared, I guess. I didn't do too much talking and then I, uh, he put me on a hospital ship for four, four, four days, I guess it was, I was on that, and I finally got my voice back. So how cold was the water when you jumped in? I would say, no, if I remember, it probably wasn't like a big, big tanker or anything like that. It was just that from where, from this point here to there is probably 20 feet maximum. That's yeah. All. yeah. Thank you for the interview and for your service. Oh, pleasure. Uh, you helped me out because I, I haven't done this in a long, long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.